it is believed that when you dream of a mountain, this is a sign of an impending challenge in waking life. For Salihin Sinai, who was born with an intellectual disability, the mountain and the dream are one and the same. Braving some of the world's toughest terrains, Salihin pushed himself to make history as the first Special Olympics athlete from Asia to conquer Mount Kilimanjaro, the world's tallest freestanding mountain. Salihin's teammates included Special Olympics volunteer Yeo JC, Tanzanian Special Olympics athlete Harith Suleiman, the group's de facto leader, mountaineering enthusiast Michael D, his sons Matthew, Christopher and David, and John Golding, family friend and fellow adventurer. In June 2011, the team set off to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, Africa, in the hope that Salihin's success will inspire special athletes around the world. Twenty-four-year-old Salihin was born with an intellectual disability. This means he faces limitations in everyday activities such as abstract thinking and communicating with people. The hike up the roof of Africa would be his first mountaineering experience, and Africa an unknown continent. It would be Salihin's biggest challenge to date in every way. Since 1999, Salihin has been participating in the Special Olympics Games, winning medals for swimming and badminton. Outside of Special Olympics, Salihin doesn't let his disability stop him from living a full life. He holds a job as a dental technician, enjoys a variety of sports and has a great group of family and friends. One such friend is global explorer and a long-time supporter of the Special Olympics, Michael D. Michael holds the Special Olympics close to his heart. His younger sister was born with Down syndrome. She's 45 now, and she's been doing Special Olympics since she was 10 years old. And during that period of time, she's gained tremendous confidence, friendships, relationships, a self-confidence to live on her own, and it literally changed her life. In 2002, Michael relocated to Singapore for work, and soon after became a permanent resident. Throughout the years, he has been an active supporter of the Games. In 2010, Michael raced through the Atacama Desert to raise funds for the Singapore team to participate in the World Summer Games. He also helps out by training runners from this contingent. One of them was Salihin. In his training sessions with Salihin, Michael was impressed by Salihin's mental and physical strengths. When Michael and his children were planning to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, they were determined to turn the climb into more than just another family vacation. Michael decided to invite Salihin along for the climb. A lot of people have said to me, isn't it risky taking Salihin with you? And I say no. In fact, it's going to be tremendously enhancing. Uh, I think it would be good for my boys, it will be good for, uh, good for me and it'll be good for him. Salihin's mother, June, attests to the positive effects of sports. Last time he, when he come back from school, he will go inside the room and always alone, you know, just sitting down, like, look at the sky, <laughs> like that. But now, he likes sport, that's why he's happy. He's a confident young man now. He's learned to speak up, he's learned to have some opinions of his own when, when he has you know, a view to share and, and that I think is really important because it is not just the sports we're talking about, it is the development of the individual. JC has known Salihin for the past eight years. He believes that Salihin's reduced ability to think abstractly may prove to be a blessing in disguise. 
Unlike some of his teammates who can anticipate problems during the climb, Salihin's condition cushions him from experiencing any fear. But physically, JC must help ensure Salihin is fit enough for this adventure. For Salihin, he's uh, very uh, aware and he's quite independent. Through the years, he has improved tremendously in terms of fitness as well as uh, interaction skills with people. In order to prepare themselves for their first climb, JC and Salihin's training for Kilimanjaro involves meeting up twice a week for conditioning workouts such as 15km runs and a gruelling circuit training of 240 push-ups, 240 sit-ups and short bursts of sprints. Training for a climb of this scale is intense and this is only one half the story. Once a week for the last three months, the team has been meeting for intensive 10 km hikes up Pukitima Hill. Come on. The hottest part of the day has not passed, but the worst part of their training has yet to come. The team simulates the weight they are expected to carry up Mount Kilimanjaro by carrying 5 kg weights. The extra weight helps train their hips, knees and ankles for the long climb. Apart from an increase in physical strength, the bond between the teammates has grown deeper and stronger. Well, as we've been going through our training for three or four months, I'd say the way Salahim has progressed has been very interesting. Um, in the beginning, when we would hike together, he'd be pretty quiet. And now we've all gotten to be friends. I think our group as a real team is really coming together. Drink a lot of water. Ascend slowly. After the intense workout, the team celebrates with a warm home-cooked meal of pasta and southern fried chicken. The team also runs through a checklist of things to pack and discusses the day-to-day -day expectations of the climb. A few days prior to the big climb, Salihin's family comes together to hold a Doa Salamat, which literally means prayers for safety a Muslim ceremony to pray for his well-being. Salihin's mother is proud of his achievements and is honoured that he has been chosen to fly the Singapore flag. You know, because he's the, so special like that, then I hope that he can climb until there and then put the Singapore flag and the Olymp Special Olympic flag on top of the mountain. In a special send-off ceremony, Salihin takes stewardship of both the Singapore and Special Olympics flags. I am very excited because I cannot wait to go to Mount Kilimanjaro. I want to try to climb the mountain, how they feel like. Like Salihin, the entire team is excited and apprehensive. Ahead of them lies the unknown as they begin their first steps to the top. With no direct flight to Tanzania, where Mount Kilimanjaro is located, the team must take a seven and a half hour flight to Doha before traveling another five hours to Nairobi, Kenya. They will then drive from Nairobi to Arusha, the closest town to Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. There they will be met by their other teammates, Special Olympics athlete Harith Suleiman and John Golding, Michael's friend and novice climber. In a symbolic gesture of reaching out to Special Olympics athletes elsewhere, 23-year-old Harith has been invited to represent Special Olympics Africa. This marks the first climb for Salihin, Harith, and 59-year-old John. All right, here we are. We're in Tanzania, just about to go through border control. And in two hours, we'll be at the foot of Kilimanjaro. Woohoo! We're getting there. We're getting there, one step at a time. 
During the course of the six-day climb, Salihin and the team will hike for 30 hours, cover a distance of over 60 kilometers, and progress through five climate zones, from the humid rainforest to the cold, freezing Arctic. Kilimanjaro stands at a colossal 5,895 meters, with five routes to the top, namely Marangu, Machame, Rongai, Umbwe, and Lemosho. The team has chosen to climb the remote Lemosho route, which guarantees extraordinary views of dramatic gorges on various sides of the mountain. To get to Uhuru Peak, the team must make their way through a series of base camps. Lava Tower, Aero Glacier, and the daunting Great Western Breach. It will not be an easy climb. I talked to Salahim about this, I talked to my boys about it. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it the hard way. These boys have real grit, they have real tenacity, and they want to go the route that is the most meaningful and really has um, uh, a sense of achievement to it. So, why make it easy? Unlike the rest of the team who have come from afar, Harith is from Tanzania. Even though this will be his first mountaineering experience, the steep vertical climb is the least of his worries. He waits in trepidation to see if language will be a barrier that will separate him from his new teammates. No such thing happens. Having spoken Swahili as a child, John becomes the team's unofficial translator. Between bits of English, Swahili and the international language of soccer, the motley group of individuals becomes a team. Today, the team has reached Arusha, Tanzania. Their drive takes them to Londorossi Park Gate, located on the western side of Kilimanjaro. This is their starting point. We hiked primarily through jungle-type territory. Frankly, it wasn't that much different from, say, the Bukatima Nature Reserve, except for the fact that it's much cooler and uh, not as humid. So that's certainly a, a welcome difference. But overnight, the temperature drops and sleep eludes Salihin and John. They are the first to feel the niggling effects of altitude sickness. After a breakfast of hot beverages, porridge, scrambled eggs and sausages, the team heads out. At almost 3,000 meters, the rainforest gives way to the moorland. Only a few flowering plants, moss and lichen, are found. As they round a corner, the team gets their first look of the intimidating mountain. I, I can't wait to put the Singapore flag and special Olympic flag at top the Kilimanjaro. The view is nothing short of extraordinary. Today, Salihin and his team will cover a distance of five kilometers up this once volcanic mountain. But the Great Western Breach, the hardest terrain Mount Kilimanjaro has to offer, looms ahead. Will they make it to the top? We're well, looking forward to the next few days. Uh, it's going to get a lot colder and we're going to get a lot higher. And so the altitude is going to I think affect people a little bit more. Having completed 4,356 meters of the hike so far, the team surrenders themselves to the thin alpine desert air. Blinding glare and a wide temperature range characterize the alpine desert. Our third climate zone. And you see a lot of these bushes with uh, white flowers. Like there's an example right there. Right? A few yellow flowers here and there. But now it's much more rock that's been strewn out from past volcanic eruption. The team goes through the cloud layer and hike up Lava Tower. 
They ascend very slowly, with a seven-hour climb stretching ahead of them. Harry, it's strong like Simba. Yeah. He's a big chatterbox. Talking to all the porters and guides. Salihin, however, is in a less happy position. Salihin uh, did very well initially, uh, but when he reached uh, Lava Tower, he seems uh, tired. And when we continued, uh, he seemed to have problems uh, traversing over the uneven rocks and steep slopes. Uh, yeah, and uh, not right now, he's showing some symptoms of uh, altitude sickness like uh, headaches and, uh, and uh, stomach aches. The quantity of breathable oxygen up at these heights is less than half the amount Salihin is used to breathing back home in Singapore. The team now has to decide if Salihin will be able to make it up the Western Breach. Right now, I've been uh, asking him, been asking him to drink more water, been adding uh, like food mix into the water so that um, it be uh, better for him, and uh, as well as uh, to get lots of rest now. Ultimately, the decision will be made by the lead guide, Patrick Stanley. The decision about Salhin will make tomorrow morning because right now he's just having, I mean, he's having, having a rest and he's okay by now, but late tomorrow then we will know what we can do. Today marks the toughest part of the climb. Despite a sleepless night and waking up with a stomach ache, Salihin somehow feels stronger. Patrick has pronounced him fit to climb. Salihin's will to push on motivates the entire team to ensure he achieves his dream. Ready for the big day? Yes, yeah. yeah. Gonna make it? Uh, I, I, I think so. You think so? Yeah. You know so? I think I can make it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you're gonna make it. All right, that's where we're going. Right up there. As anticipated, the Western Breach proves to be a challenging climb, consisting of a seven hour, 45 to 60 degree climb to the top. One by one, the team members are stricken by altitude sickness. Salihin is hard as hit. But even as Salihin continues to push himself, his body appears to have reached its physical limits. Uh, the teammates uh, helped carry some of his stuff when he was feeling weak. And uh, most importantly is uh, because of his determination and uh, will to continue, we, uh, we pushed, we, we, we encouraged and helped as much as we can by pushing him or pulling him at difficult parts and uh, encourage him along the way. Even with this support, only Salihin can get himself to the top. Through sheer grit, Salihin makes it to their base camp for the night. And this is the summit forms our goal for tomorrow. With the last store of his remaining strength, Salihin walks with Harith towards the campsite for the night. The ultimate summit, however, awaits. Due to the high altitude, Salihin and the rest of the team experienced another sleepless night. Salihin wakes up tired, but thrilled at the prospect of completing the last 200 meters of his climb. So today is the summit day. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, I can wait. I, I, I try to push myself. The team sets off at 7 a.m., just as the sun starts to warm the desolate roof of Africa. All right, this is the final 100 meters to the top. Harry and Salahin are leading the way. At 8.50 a.m., the team makes it to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. All right, Salahin and Harry. Touch it, baby. Yeah. yeah. Say, Gilly! Gilly!
As he stands on the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro, Salihin is overcome with a wave of emotions as he flies the Singapore flag on top of the world's highest solitary peak. To everybody in Singapore, we're standing at the summit of Kilimanjaro, 6,000 meters up. And we're all extremely proud of him, as I know everyone in Singapore is as well. Thank you for your support. As the day draws to a close, the team slowly makes their way down to their campsite for their final night on the mountain. For the team, there is no greater satisfaction than the knowledge that they have been part of a global message to show the world that within each intellectually disabled person lies great potential and courage. I hope that Singaporeans will be inspired by Salihin. This also showcases that uh, special athletes are, are also able to do whatever that normal people can do as well. Salihin, JC and John returned to Singapore on the 16th of June 2011. Having covered almost 8,000 kilometers, traveled across the Indian Ocean and survived five climate zones to reach the top of the mountain they set out to climb. Honor and personal glory may be reasons why some people climb mountains. But for Salihin Sinai, his achievement may well go beyond personal glory and self-actualization. He may not realize it himself, but that moment atop Mount Kilimanjaro is one that many others will find meaning in and inspiration from. Five thousand eight hundred and ninety-five meters stands between him and his dream. I thank you, I can pick it up. A display of extraordinary courage in extreme conditions. As he becomes the first Special Olympics athlete from Asia to conquer Mount Kilimanjaro. Monday at 9.30 p.m. Five thousand eight hundred and ninety-five meters stands between him and his dream. I thank you, I can pick it up. A display of extraordinary courage in extreme conditions. As he becomes the first Special Olympics athlete from Asia to conquer Mount Kilimanjaro. Tonight at 9.30. Five thousand eight hundred and ninety-five meters stands between him and his dream. I thank you, I can pick it up. 
a display of extraordinary courage in extreme conditions as he becomes the first Special Olympics athlete from Asia to conquer Mount Kilimanjaro. Monday at these times. Five thousand eight hundred and ninety-five meters stands between him and his dream. A display of extraordinary courage in extreme conditions as he becomes the first Special Olympics athlete from Asia to conquer Mount Kilimanjaro tonight at these times. Thank you, I got the key.